So we have for you the top five holiday movies. Now Wade's got a couple, and I've got a couple, and we got a graphic, and there it is. Non-denominational. <laughs> All right, Wade, so it's, it's, it's holiday time. People love their Christmas movies. Yes. Right? People love their Hanukkah movies. Not really. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. Uh, the Kwanzaa movies, all about the Kwanzaa. So what I want to do now is I want to kind of yes. go back and forth, ping pong it, right? Let's do it. My all-time favorite holiday film, all-time favorite Christmas film, Miracle on 34th Street, directed by George Seaton, starring Edmund Gwynn as maybe Santa Claus. <laughs> That's what the movie's all about. Uh, this is a wonderful film that I enjoyed completely on a different level as a child, and then as I became an adult, I enjoyed it on an, another level entirely. Uh, it's a movie that grows up with you. It's a movie that's all about hopes and dreams and the holiday spirit and, and, and believing in things. And it asks children to believe in certain things, but it asks adults to believe in certain things as well. Uh, a very young Natalie Wood in one of her first performances is extraordinary. Uh, simply one of the most delightful movies ever made, holiday or otherwise, and Edmund Gwynn got a very, very deserved Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor that year. This uh, this movie is just timeless. Never mind the, the two remakes of it uh, that are not nearly in its league. You want to see the original. I could not agree more. It's a great film. And my first pick is a film that I have a feeling you don't like as much as I do. It's A Wonderful Life. Yeah. Now, this is from 1946. This is directed mm -hmm. by Frank Capra, starring Jimmy Stewart, as George Bailey, who is, when the film starts, rather suicidal. He's in financial and personal ruin until he is visited by a little angel named Clarence who takes him around town and convinces him what life would be like if George Bailey did not exist. And this is the first film that uh, Frank Capra and uh, Jimmy Stewart did after they returned uh, from serving in World War II. And I think this film is just delightful. It is new every time I see it. It is absolutely moving. It com it gets down into small town values and the problems of small town people. It doesn't sugarcoat it. It, sh it gets sh it gets corny and moving and sugarcoaty at the end. But to set that up, the movie is su it's surprisingly when you get right down to it, pretty ha pretty hard hearted. I mean, it really does kind of delve into what it's like to live in the small town Bedford Falls. And I just thought it was great. I, I love the characters. I loved its sincerity. I thought it was very moving, and I love watching it every year. It's a great film. What's your next one? My next one is a more recent Christmas film from 2003, Elf. Uh, I think Elf, directed by John Favreau, as he's moving into the big budget territory that would eventually launch him uh, over to Iron Man, starring Will Ferrell in what is still his most charming performance. Great supporting performances from James Caan, Zoe Deschanel, Ed Asner as Santa. Wonderful movie about an elf who's not really an elf. He was adopted into Santa's elf family, and uh, many years later, the grown own Buddy the Elf, played by Will Ferrell, goes on a quest to find his real natural father, who of course is James Caan. Yes, it's a fish out of water film, but it is an incredibly charming fish out of water film, and it's got some of the funniest scenes and the funniest lines you will ever see. Will Ferrell is never better than when he is playing completely charming and naive and wide-eyed with wonder at a, at a world that is so much more cynical than he has any ability to comprehend. This movie is a delight. Now, the next film of our top five holiday films I want to talk about is something that you should watch when the parents go to sleep. When your parents go to sleep, you hear what you want to do. You want to try to get yourself to a red box, maybe not a blockbuster, but a red box or a Netflix or something, and get yourself Bad Santa. Now, Bad Santa is the best. Bad Santa is a rude and crude dark comedy with Billy Bob Thornton playing the most vulgar, R-rated Santa. He's drunk. He's a, he's, he's a skirt chaser. He is rude. He is the, the funniest Santa you've ever seen. And every year, him and his little midget friend named Marcus have this Christmas scam that they pull on these townsfolk. And it is just absolutely hilarious. If you want to get a sense of how the movie completely owns what it's trying to be, it doesn't sugarcoat it. It earns every every pixel of its R rating. This was directed by Terry Zweigoff, who also directed uh, one of the all-time great documentaries, Crumb, along with Ghost World. So you know you're getting a guy with a sensibility that will really take this concept and run with it and not sugarcoat it and not ba and not backpedal it. And Billy Bob Thornton is hilarious. And the, the, the guy who played Tony Cox, who plays the midget, he's just angry and just ornery and hilarious. And I just think Bad Santa is great. All right, so Wade, uh, you got one more. I do have 
have one more. Uh, from 1983, A Christmas Story, the Bob Clark directed classic, which is really, really extraordinary to a lot of people because Bob Clark uh, did not exactly come off the radar, come on the radar as the guy you would expect to make a great Christmas film. He was known primarily for Porky's at the time. Uh, he also made a movie called Black Christmas nine years earlier about, you know, a murderer on Christmas. Uh, so he, this is not the guy you go to for feel-good movies, but based on the writings of Gene Shepard, uh, the, the autobiographical writings of Gene Shepard, who also co-wrote the screenplay and narrates the film, uh, this is just a wonderful movie about uh, Christmas in all of its weird eccentricities. Peter Billingsley playing the little kid who wants a BB gun, and the whole movie is, is basically about he and his family and their quest to somehow make Christmas work, despite the fact that they just live in this crazy little town where, you know, people do the most bizarre and strange things, but there's this warm feeling around the edges of this movie where you think, you know, no matter how much mischief occurs in this movie, no matter how mean Santa is to Peter Billingsley, uh, no matter how mean the kids are to each other with the, with the tongue on the, on the pole and the ice and the whole thing, all the stuff that goes wrong, um, somehow Christmas always turns out right. And that's the great message of the movie is that, you know, Christmas makes everything right. It is a wonderful, warm, uh, sweet, nostalgic movie in every conceivable way, really well written, and maybe the best film Bob Clark ever made. There you go. So those are our top five holiday films. Don't forget, folks. Whoa, cue up the graphic. You guys, yeah, I'm slicker than you think I am. I got this down. You thought I was going somewhere else, but I really wanted to see the graphic. That's a beautiful graphic. May, may we cart that graphic out every holiday season. That, well, that graphic will... That'll be a perennial, just like It's a Wonderful Life. You'd have to have new top five movies every holiday. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm willing to do that. Ta-da!